This is National Eating Disorder Week. Medical professionals are reaching out to families to try and help them identify what eating disorders are and how to help those who need it. Dr. Brad Smith is medical director of the Adult Eating Disorder Programs at Rogers Memorial Hospital, and he joins us now with a little bit more on this important conversation. Thanks for being here, doctor. Thank you very much for having Let's, me. Let's uh, identify what the eating disorders are on the radar. What are we talking about here? Well, the primary eating disorders are anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Mm -hmm. There's also another category called eating disorder not otherwise specified that encapsulates uh, disorders that don't quite fit into those three categories. Uh, but we're talking about a psychiatric illness where people have a high degree of uh, disordered thoughts and behaviors related to food, eating, and body image. That's interesting because I think a lot of people look at that as a physical thing. Someone has a problem with eating, they have a problem with their weight, so that's a physical thing, a visual thing, and, and you look at it from the, from the psychological aspects. If there's something wrong up here that, that is causing some of these problems. Right, certainly there's a great degree of anxiety and depression mm -hmm. that goes along with these illnesses, but the anxiety is significantly focused on the eating and the food itself, as well as the body image. Uh, so it's very much a psychiatric and psychological issue. I know these things can affect all different kinds of people from all walks of life, but specifically, uh, what are our traditional areas where we look for these problems? Well, as you said, it knows no boundaries for age, race, and gender, mm -hmm. uh, but primarily we're looking at, at young females, uh, adolescent and young adults, uh, but again, there are no boundaries, so we have specialized programs in, erupting around the country and at Rogers to try to address the eating disorders and people who don't fit into that demographic. I think a lot of people don't think these are the sort of things that affect men, but I did see an interesting statistic. It's, it's, uh, it's not a small amount of men who can uh, suffer from eating disorders. Right, it's at least 10 to 15 percent mm -hmm. of the current estimates, but we think that's a gross underestimate because men are less likely to report it even in anonymous surveys. What sort of things do you look for in a, in a family member uh, who you might suspect is going through some issues? Well, certainly you might see some significant fluctuations in weight, mm -hmm. so that would be a telltale sign. And then you look at the behaviors around eating at mealtimes, uh, either cutting back the food or engaging in behaviors afterwards, such as going to the bathroom shortly mm -hmm. after eating on a regular basis. So a set of complicated behaviors that happen around the eating time itself. If it's to the point where some of these symptoms have manifested themselves where, where you can tell, do you call for professional help right away or is there something that anybody can handle on their own? Absolutely call for professional help. These disorders are extremely complex. They also have a very high mortality rate which mm -hmm. raises the need for awareness for these disorders but it requires professional help. Well, Doc, thanks so much for being here and talking about this this week. And again, it's going to be on the radar. Uh, you can find more information here on eating disorders from the experts online. We've set up a link on our website, tmj4.com.